Hi, everybody. Let's go ahead and share my screen and we'll do this last lecture for this module. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into Hall and we're going to talk about Black feminist thought and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so Black, uh, the BLM movement or Black Lives Matter movement is a measure of social uh, of social movements. And what she's talking about really here is how they um, embody Black feminist thought through their movement and why it matters. Um, and so they talk about the biggest thing here is being um, a bottom up movement instead of a top down. So instead of having these like, so when you look at like the Black Lives Matter movement versus maybe the civil rights movement, right? civil rights movement had very, very key leaders and everybody drove behind those key leaders. And in doing that, what happened was historically when one of those leaders um, was take, politically taken out like um, MLK was, um, then what you had was a movement that struggled to find that new leadership role to fill that position versus Black Lives Matter movement, where those leaders are there, they're tangible and they're awesome and they're visible and they're proud. But the lead, the, the movement itself was built on this idea that the community itself is the movement and that that community is going to rise up and create its own um, perspectives and understandings of the situation so that they weren't reliant on specifically just those three amazing Black leader, Black women leadership, but they were also relying on themselves as their leadership. And that's what they meant by that bottom up versus that top down kind of movement. And this really is functional in the current political atmosphere that we have. Um, and it really works and it's um, proving to be the way in which movements are operating within the constraints of social networking that we have now via social media outlets, but it's also allowing that space for a wide variety of people from very different areas of the globe to network in, in, in ways that we didn't necessarily have in movements where leadership was localized, where it was harder to um, have that leader be everywhere we needed the movement to be and, in, and things of that nature. Um, and so really what Hall emphasizes too is how Black feminist theory um, was ingrained within this movement and how Black Lives Matter um, is an example of these kind of ideas. And so we're gonna walk over or walk through some of those. And um, the first one being really that margin, which, sorry, I definitely um, uh, had a typo there, but anyway, from margin to center ideology, which means that we take individualized or marginalized groups or population and we pull them to the center of the framework and that those experience be the center of the framework. And for them as black queer women, you created this, this movement that was based on all these different kinds of marginalizations and making them become center so that it wasn't just about one specific perspective, one specific problem, one specific thing. And while they took on police brutality, um, Black Lives Matter was part of much more broad conversations surrounding things of, um, social injustice, not just in the legal realm and the um, uh, like uh, like law and order kind of realm, but also situations of housing inequality, of economic inequality, of educational inequality, of concerns about how we were portraying and making visible the lives of black people. And so really having conversations surrounding multitudes of institutions where we took, where they took marginalized populations and they brought them to the center of the conversation. And that really, really matters. Um, they did this in a very intersectional way as we taught, as I kind of mentioned earlier, but really bringing those perspectives of multiple different ideologies and understanding that um, trans lives in that mattered, that queer lives and, and kind of as this this graphic down here shows, um, it wasn't just about black male um, middle-class lives. This was about 
Black lives as a whole and where they intersected and how those intersections differentiated and, and, and created different obstacles to overcome. And that really, really, really stuck with people. Um, it also talked about this scholarship activism idea and that idea that um, their activism was also built on and based in this understanding of data, of perspectives, of all these different theoretical frameworks and taking, taking scholarly pieces of work and um, academic information and translating that into activism and into movement material. And that was very, very powerful because it gives not only um, data behind, but it also gives a population base um, within the activism roles that create space for college students, which have actively and consistently been at the forefront of most um, big movements in, in our in our US history. Um, it gave the ability to solid there to build solidarity among different groups. So it gave um, BLM gave space for black trans persons, black queer persons, um, black disabled persons to have conversations among other black individuals so that there was some solidarity building between different movements, between the LGBTQ movement, between um, the women's the women's movement, between um, movements, immigration movements, between all of these different things where we had that space to create solidarity among issues and create and build um, on these ideas of these multiple layers of oppression. And that really, really, again, worked. It stuck and it mattered. Um, it also, I think, and I think one of the most important things that they talk about um, is this attention to borders and boundaries. And by that, they mean that while they acknowledge all of these different perspectives and how they matter, they also gave room for there to be boundaries and borders within these perspectives and worked very hard to not homogenize these experiences in ways that meant that any one particular group or any one particular identity was lost. And um, that really worked for them. It really created space for them to, to do that solidarity building, to do that, um, that collectivism, that power. Um, and in doing so, they did kind of this last, this last step, which was they gave the power to the community and kept that power within the community so that the community itself held the, the um, essentially like held the theoretical rights to um, this movement and where it went and what it did and what it wanted to focus on in any given moment and how it needed to expand and how it needed to bridge gaps and, and form and grow with any given situation. Um, and I think that this article does a really good job at looking how a modern day movement created space. And again, wanna fall back on that bell hooks quote that I started with, it gave space to queering a social movement in such a way that mandated and demanded to give space to those marginalized populations and to allow those entire communities to be lifted up in very, very particular ways that worked. Um, and so that's kind of the last I have for you for this module. I hope you enjoyed the readings. I hope you're enjoying whatever one other one that you picked. Um, again, touch base with me if you have any questions and I will look forward to hearing from you all. Enjoy the rest of your module and the rest of your weeks. Bye everybody.